Hey YouTube, <laughs> I'm back. I was uh, about to make some videos for my Patreon, but I don't know. I just want to talk about other things. Let me tell you what the lady told me, Katie. Some of my last video, you know, I got COVID, and the, and the uh, doctor had to prescribe me some prednisone for my uh, respiratory because you know I wasn't breathing at full capacity. She told me it was gonna give me a lot of energy, okay? And it did. I stayed up to almost three o'clock in the morning talking on the phone. I never do that. She said it's gonna give you insomnia and a lot of energy, okay? I did go to sleep. It wasn't like a hard, super hard hard restful sleep though which when I go to bed that late which I rarely do is a super hard you know deep sleep but it wasn't and I've been up ever since I have not been sleepy or tired or anything okay so she said it was gonna give me a lot of energy so that's where I am right now a lot of energy I don't know if it's from you know the <laughs> Bread is on or just it's from me because I get like that sometimes all right you know I get sometimes like look I you know I don't want to do nothing <laughs> But however long it take, all right. But uh, I was thinking about um, what I was telling you guys about in my last video about uh, the Forrest Gump gig I did when I majored um, in film production at Howard and Theater Arts. So I was like, I, and it, it reminded me of um, another fun experience I had when I did some acting here at Caramel. Now, if you're not familiar with Caramel House, here. Caramel House is here in Cleveland. It is a historical landmark. I'm going to uh, read it to you. I'm going to Google it. Um, so you know what it's all about. Caramel House Performing Arts Theater Center. So I'm going to read the history to you just real quick. Um, it, it's black historically black theater, reflecting the strength of the black influence on its development. The Playhouse Settlement was officially, now it used to be called, and I didn't know this, I'm seeing this for the first time. It was officially renamed Caramel House in 1941. Okay, um, let me see. Caramel is a word in the Swahili language meaning a place of joyful gather gathering. It became a place where families could gather, share stories, feast, and enjoy. Langston Hughes remarked in 1961 that it's a cultural shame that a great country like America with 20 million people of color has no primary, primarily serious colored theater. There isn't. Karamu is the very nearest thing to it. My feeling is not only should a Negro theater, if we want to use that term, do plays by and about Negroes, but it should do plays slanted toward the community in which it exists. It should be in a primarily Negro community since that is the way our racial life in America is still. It should not be a theater that should be afraid to do a Negro folk play about people who are perhaps not very well educated because some of the intellectuals or quote unquote intellectuals in again in quotes, are ashamed of such materials. Notables of Caramel House not only include playwright Langston Hughes, but also authors Zora Neale Hurston, one of my favorite, and Lorraine Hansberry, one of my other favorites. Um, other Caramel House alumni that have distinguished themselves on stage and screen include Ruby D, which you know, she is from Cleveland, Ohio. I did get the opportunity to meet her in Atlanta. Um, she was promoting the book about her and Ozzy Davis. I bought the book. She signed it. Really good book. Okay, but Ruby D, Robert Guillaume, Ron O'Neill, Bill Cobbs, Ivan Dixon, Minnie Gentry, and more recently, James Pickens of Gray's Anatomy, Imani Hakeem uh, from Everybody Hates Chris, Deborah Bird, vocal coach and arranger for American Idol and Canadian Idol, and me, <laughs> Nikki Lewis. But anyway, um, shortly after celebrating its 100 year anniversary, Caramel House fell face, was faced with well-publicized stories of defeat, a revoked tax-exempt status, a massive staff layoff, declining budget, and theater attendance numbers in the Fairfax neighborhood of Cleveland, which is, you know, the inner city of Cleveland, with its own concerns for economic development. However, with the rallying support of the Cleveland community, community and notable funders, and under the leadership of Tony F. Sias, who I do know, um, President and CEO, Caramel House is experiencing its own renaissance of sorts. I was doing work there at Caramel before he became president and CEO, um, but I do know him. From the, play, from the Plain Dealers article, Caramel House's Big Comeback. And they got a huge uh, mural painting of Ruby D on the side of the build, building. Caramel has introduced a robust summer arts program for children offered at a sliding scale fee so that it is affordable, etc., 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 okay? But it is a... Um, 
this is just what's happening with it now. The whole Cleveland area should applaud by what's going on here with it. I'm looking at this on caramelhouse.org. It is a, a you know historical uh, landmark here in our United States of America. Let me see um, how it started in 1915. A pair of Oberlin College graduates in nearby Oberlin, Ohio, opened a settlement house in an area of Cleveland called the Roaring Third, located at the corner of East 38th Street and Central Avenue. Uh, my mom, the lady who raised me, she was, that's, she was raised in that area, Central. A rough area. Okay, rough area then. <laughs> okay. With incredible vision, Russell and Rowena Woodman, I'm talking about my mom was raised there. Okay. Russell and Rowena Woodman Je Jellif set out to establish a common ground where people of different races, religions, and social and economic backgrounds could come together to seek and share common ventures. The settlement house idea was conceived out of the principles upon which our nation was founded, that the individual is not wholly determined by his environment, but has the capacity to transcend it. Each person can, by his response to his environment, change the way it affects him. Everyone can discover his own independent significance and make his personal distinct contribution to life. The Jellifs soon discovered that the arts discovered that the arts provided the perfect common ground, and in 1917, plays at the new Playhouse Settle began. The early 1920s saw a large number of African Americans move into the area from the South during the Great Migration, but the resist but resisting some pressure to exclude their new neighbors, the Jellifs, a Caucasian couple, insisted that all races were welcome. Okay. You know, as a lot of our historically black uh, organizations were founded by, you know, uh, Caucasian people. Like I went to Howard University and many, I, I don't know if it's most, I think most, the majority of historically black colleges and universities, I think it's most, but if not most, it's a lot, were founded, you know, by Caucasian people, by white people, like Howard was founded by General Oliver Otis Howard, which is so funny because in Founders Library, Founders Library, it's one of the first camp uh, buildings you see when you, you know, walk on the main yard, the library is right there off to the left, you go in, there's a huge picture of General Oliver Otis Howard, and I was talking to someone, and they, I didn't know, you know, before I went, I didn't know. I had heard that about HBCUs, but I wasn't sure about Howard when I saw it. I was like, oh, okay, you know, makes sense from the history that I've heard, you know, of many of the HBCUs. And um, she just, it was something to us too, she couldn't believe. And I was like, well, there's pictures right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She refused to believe it. It's like, this is Founders Library. There's pictures right there. You can go, you know, right to the um, the archives. I forget what, what it was called. Um... Oh, if anybody from Howard's watching this, I know you're screaming the name of the archives that I'm thinking about right by the library, right by Founders Library. I just can't think of the name of it right there. You know, all the history and information is right there, but nevertheless. <laughs> Uh, the Playhouse Settlement quickly became a magnet for some of the best African-American artists of the day. Dancers, printmakers, actors, and writers all found a place where they could practice their crafts. The Jellifs held high, hand, high standards of excellence in the arts, not for the sake of excellence, because, but because they knew that pursuing excellence makes the greatest demands on the individual to fulfill the promise of his potential. The Playhouse Settlement became an active contributor to the Harlem Renaissance, and Langston Hughes roamed the settlement halls constantly. And just like I said, here in 1941, it was changed. The name was changed to Caramel. Okay, so I did some work there. Caramel, for years, when I was growing up, it it always seemed to have these, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, financial difficulty, always being threatened with being closed. Never did. Thank God it never did through everything that that theater has been through. It never did. Okay, but I haven't been there in quite a while. Um, so I just wanted to talk about some of my acting gigs that I did. I Like I said, I started... Um, uh, doing taking classes at the Cleveland Playhouse, and I think I was—I mean, I might have been about like seven years old. I don't think I was quite as young as six, but six or seven years old, maybe eight. But I really think I was about seven. And um, you know, all I knew was that I saw TV. Like I won't do that. So my mom, you know, okay, I'll sign you up for class. I remember I asked her one day because you know that was when uh, uh, what was it? A, not a different world, different strokes. <laughs> I was a little kid, and I asked my mom, I was like, did did they um, find him, you know, talking about Arnold, on the street and say, hey, we're going to put you in this show, you know, <laughs> what, a, what a kid would do. And she was like, no, baby, you know, he took classes, this, that, and the other. I, I don't know specifically if that was his history. She was just telling me, if you, in other words, if you want to do this, I'll sign you up for some classes. And she did. 
And um, I remember going to my the, my classes there. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go in there and get on stage and we're just going to do some acting. And it wasn't like that, you know. We went in there and they had us doing all of these exercises, mirror, mirror exercises, like reflection exercises, you know, stretching, a lot of stretching, a lot of, you know, pretend to be a particular type of animal and stuff. I was just really thoroughly disgusted and disappointed <laughs> because that's not what I thought it was going to be, you know. So I hated going because I was like, I just, I thought, we just gonna go up on stage but you know I finished out the classes and my mom would have me you know there off and on for for years um taking classes I think the last time I took class at the Cleveland Playhouse I probably was I know I was in high school something I was about 16 or 17 I took an improv class I and I was for years I was one of the few black people in there it, it back then it, it just wasn't a lot of us there, you know, taking classes there. I don't even think the Cleveland Playhouse does classes anymore. I know there was a point they didn't because I, I, like I said in another video, I looked it up for um, myself. I wanted to take some more and my daughter, but they weren't offering any, okay, and they moved. Um, I believe they moved downtown. I, I'm not quite sure because the the Playhouse, the building, um, shit, the... I need to look up to be 100% sure. I believe Playhouse Square has that building now. Okay. But anyway, big, beautiful theater. Okay. Um, of course, when I was younger, it, it was it was a nice theater, but they had done some renovations. But it was just really, you know, the theater just has a particular smell and a particular energy. I don't care where I have uh, done theater work at. In every single theater that I've been in, it's like that. There's that theater smell at Howard when I would go in the theater. There's that theater smell. I was When I lived in New York, I worked like off, off Broadway, okay? But I didn't do acting. I worked as a house manager. Walked in there, and it was in a church. It was in a church. Um, and I think they still utilize that space on Sundays as a church. I'm not sure, but still, it still had that theater. So it's just something about the theater. Caramel, that theater smell, just that theater feel, that theater energy. And it's like no matter what theater I go in, it's always the same. You know, so... Um, but I had done an improv class. I found that I was really, really good at improv. I loved doing improv. You know, I loved it more so than, you know, reading a script and going by that script. Because sometimes... You know, for me, it was like, you know, um, there are different methods of acting. I never particularly followed one method that I was aware of. I just, you know, I read the, you're really supposed to study up on the character, make the character your own. Uh, some, uh, um, you know, plays, the, uh, the author, the playwright, rather, may have some say in it. Sometimes, no. You know, I, I want I, I would like to think most of the time, but I'm not 100 percent sure. But sometimes, no, sometimes the director may have a say in how they want that character shaped. Sometimes, no, they'll leave it all up to the actor to do that, you know. Um, and I know it can be really frustrating sometimes for an actor. Um, I've heard some things about various movie sets, like with certain directors, where it's like they they're trying to make the actor, you know, make play this character a certain way or make this character be a certain way and you know the actor is like that's not your job <laughs> you know it's my job to do that you know and your vision for this character may not be my particular vision so sometimes they have you know people bump heads um as a result of that um you know with the the actors and those be you know behind the scenes but anyway you know um you know and I didn't. I, I wasn't necessarily always good at stuff. You know, I studied them lines, and I, I was pretty good at memorization. I, you know, I could have been better. But I was pretty good at memorization, but um, when I said could have been better, if I took, if I had taken a lot more time with it, it didn't really take me that much. To me, and I don't know. I wondered. I was always good at memorization in school and everything. My, I found out my great grandfather on my father's side. Um, I found this out years ago. He had like a what do they call a photographic memory? Like they were, they told me like this man could read you know a page like he would know a page out of the Bible like word for word. You know, per, he, he could just read it one time and then he just it was just there automatic for him. You know, and um, it, it, if he had someone read. He, pick the scripture, I want you to read this to me, if they missed a word, he would know it, <laughs> you know, he meant, go back, you missed that particular word, you know, or whatever, um, just because he had a photographic memory, so I was pretty good at, me. I, I didn't have a photographic memory, but I was pretty, pretty good at memorization, my daughter's really good at memorization as well, 
Um, but anyway, you know, memorize them lines. And I don't know, it was just, I felt box, boxed in. I would feel boxed in, um, you know, trying to play a character based just off some lines of the script. But that's, you know, bringing, that's the job too of an actor. You know, you need to bring that character to life. You know, read the script, study the script. Who is this character? You know, you just have character from what the author has written, but you can, you know, you create based off your vision who and what this character is, their background. Why are they saying the things that they're, they're saying? What have they gone through in their past? No, this is not necessarily something the playwright is going to give, uh, um, you know, the actor to do to bring all that information there to bring that character to life but anyway so with improv you know I didn't have to do all that I was just really good at just boom you know <laughs> off the top of my head you know just going with the floor I remember I took an acting class the last acting class I took at the Cleveland Playhouse like I said I think it was about 16 and we did improv it was my first time doing it and I remember one exercise we had to do was um you know they would give us a word. We had to create uh, something off of that word, create a, a little scene off of that word. And whenever they told us to stop, whatever the last word that was said, then the next group that came up had to create something, you know, a, a scene off of that word. I had a lot of fun with that, you know, but I didn't, I didn't feel boxed in. It was just like the freedom just to kind of flow, you know, with it. And I, I just like that freedom to flow. But anyway, um, so let me think of some of the acting gigs that I've done. I can't remember the very... And I now have my resume in front of me. Uh, so it's on one of my flash drives somewhere. I check my flash drives. I don't see it, see it on there. But it's on a flash drive I got sitting around here somewhere. But anyway, so I can't remember the very first thing that I did. You know, um, you know, you always kind of do acting stuff in church in a, in a way. Um, I did, I was a queen of hearts in when I was in high school. My senior year, crazy thing <laughs> Okay, so I was at a new, no, it was my junior year because I was in the drama club, all right? Crazy thing, I was nervous. I was very nervous, okay? Again, I was a new student, okay, first year, so I was kind of nervous almost the whole entire school year. You know, a junior, we're not talking about, like, I went in as a freshman. I was a junior. Everybody already knew everybody, and I went to Catholic school that year, so a lot of them had gone to school with one another from elementary school on. I was completely new, Okay. And I didn't have my glasses on. Well, I have LASIK eye surgery now. I don't wear contacts or anything. I got LASIK eye surgery a couple years ago. And so I didn't, or was it last year? Might have been early last year. But anyway, I didn't have my glasses on, so <laughs> I was nervous. And I can not remember some of the lines, and I was just standing there. I think this was like the second night, like, oh, shit. But I had my glasses on, and the girl was trying to feed me the lines, and I was just looking at her like, I don't know if I'm fuck she's saying because I didn't have my glasses on I don't know some kind of way we got through it okay I don't remember how I felt so I was like I'm so sorry I don't have on my glasses I couldn't see what you're because she was like right there you know and I just saw her moving her lips like blah blah <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't remember and it was just like just the next hair to move on you know so I probably totally messed up that scene um what else did I do? I talked about in the last day I was an extra in Forrest Gump. I did a Key Bank Industrial where I played the teller, um, one of the tellers. I did, um, now technically, at least back then, you weren't supposed to put extra work on your resume. I did. I just didn't call it an extra. Because I've seen plenty of uh, enough actors do that. Like, I was an extra in that, but they didn't put extra. So, like, I was a, I put protester, you know, as opposed to extra, you know, for the Forrest Gump thing. Um, and I didn't have no problems, you know, nobody accepting it. Um, I did a commercial, but it, it, it was just a huge, big old group of us for it. Was, it was a Target commercial way back, way back um, here in Ohio. It was, we we all got together. We were out to be in a big field. Save, save Ohio. <laughs> and um, so it wasn't like you could see me or anything. It was just a huge group of us. Um, and what else did I do? I did, um, you know, church stuff. I did do, um, there was, when I was in Atlanta, the church, I went to a young girl. She was a playwright. And she wrote a play. I was like, well, come on, we're going to put your play on. You know, like I said, I always work with young people. And we did that play. I, I made them. I made everybody audition for a role. And everybody got something to do. You know, I, it was church. I wasn't going to, you know, wasn't no official <laughs> theater. I wasn't going to, you know, kids be hurt. I didn't get a part of the play. No, everybody got a part in the play. And um, I, I was the director. And, you know, I put the production on, you know, in her name. And that was fun. <coughs> um... 
I think that young lady is doing some marvelous things now. I've seen her on Facebook. It's been a long time since I've seen her on Facebook. Just beautiful, just blossomed into a beautiful young woman. All of those young people did. Oh, my God. Because when I went to seminary, you know, I went when I was 25. So the church I went to started working in, you know, with the, you know, in the church, working with the young people and everything. And man, seeing those, them on Facebook, you know, older, I mean, these were young people, like preteens and teens and seeing them married, and children in their careers. It was just like, wow, you know, just blossomed into beautiful, beautiful young people, you know, beautiful people. Um, it was just a little small church in Georgia in, um, what was it called? It was the name of that church. Um, New Horizons. Wasn't that it? New Rise the Church of God in Christ. <laughs> the dean of the seminary, he was the, the pastor there. So, I, you know, I went to his church. A little small church in, um, it was in Atlanta. I mean, of course, drivable from Atlanta because I lived right in Atlanta at the AU Center. Uh, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name of the town that it was in. But anyway, he has since transitioned. Okay. Um, he became bishop, and I, you know, then I found out a couple years ago, maybe last year, or year before last, that he tra he's transitioned. Okay, you know, life moves on. When I saw those young people just growing, I was like, oh my gosh! And like, yes, people grow. You know, um, what else did I do? Um, I didn't get okay. I was at Howard. I minored in theater. Okay. Well, I had my directing teacher was a lady by the name of. I think her first name was Laura, Miss Katz. This woman was a well-known woman, you know, I, from what I understood, well-known on on, um, on Broadway for her work. She, she was my, she taught uh, direction. You know, I can't remember the exact name of the class, but it was for directing. Directing, not direction, directing. Um, I can't remember my intro to theater professor's name I really liked him he talked so much he couldn't stand this was back when uh, Living Color you know was a big deal he did not like that show he felt it was so stereotypical he talked about that show talked about that show there was a guy in the class he kept defending the show I was like god damn you know quit defending the show the man is right <laughs> well I didn't know couldn't find out it was Marlon Wayne. <laughs> I found out it was him okay so I glanced with him alright um, I took uh, costume and design with Miss Katz as well. And uh, Taraji P. Henson was in that class, okay? Well, you know, she wasn't, she was a student at Howard, you know, at the time. You know, she wasn't, you know, a Hollywood star at that time. And I sat next to her in class and we would talk about, oh, I can't draw. <laughs> you know, how am I gonna pass this class? You know. Um, now, you, for some of you, you would remember and I want to look his name up. Well, I'm, I'm going to see if I can look his name up. I don't remember, because I minored in theater now. So I didn't take, you know, I, I took, I was a minor in theater. So I didn't take, you know, extensive theater classes. I took like, you know, the basic classes, level one. The, the man, I don't remember who the dean of fine arts was at first. I think it was a woman. I'm not sure. But then someone else came in as the dean of fine arts. I think my junior year he had been one of the uh regular actors on all my children he was black let me see if i could find it okay to get his name i, I did get to speak with him um about you know my interests way back when of the in theater. Oh man. Um I'm looking at I put in old cast from all my children. I believe it was all my children. I believe it was all my children, cause that that was one of the show, uh, um, 
soap operas that my mom didn't really like me watching soap operas, okay? But I did watch it. That was one of the ones I watched on a regular basis. I don't see him on here. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So I'm going to put in something else. Former deans of the school of fine arts at Howard University. Let me see what comes up. Okay, theater arts, Howard EDU, history, Howard Players, College of Fine Arts, Children's Theater, your pimp. I don't see him. I mean, I don't see it. Leadership. Maybe I'll look under leadership. You know, we're talking about, I graduated in 94. So we're talking about like 92 through 94 or 93. Fine Arts Walk of Fame, maybe it's here. No. No. Um. I might have to just, um. look it up later and like put it in the description his name because I don't remember I don't remember Dang. but anyway I made I um I had a friend who, who he was from Cleveland he worked in the uh, department in, in the theater arts uh, the College of Fine Arts well, when he would come home to Cleveland, he was from Cleveland, you know, he would bring me home a, a few times. He worked in costuming. Um, he, he transitioned uh, quite a while ago. Um, and, you know, I told him that I wanted to audition, you know, but I was really scared, you know, because I'm at Howard and, you know, I was like with my minor's theater arts and, you know, all of these great thespians and blah, blah, blah. He was like, girl, go ahead and audition. So I auditioned. And what I did was I had one monologue <laughs> because when I went to um, the Cleveland Playhouse, you know, we had to choose a monologue. Well, I chose a monologue, you know, for one of the classes. I chose a monologue. I, I stuck with that monologue for years. It was from Zoo Man and the Sign, okay? And I played uh, a, a part with Zoo Man and the Sign. Um, it was a play, Giancarlo Esposito, who I mean, listen, I used to love me some Giancarlo Esposito, okay? He was the one, and he did quite a few of the Spike Lee films. He did, um, uh, what, what was it? He was in, um, what was the jazz one? Um, Mo Better Blues. He was the one who played the piano. Um, what other Spike Lee movie? He was in um, Do the Right Thing. You know, he was in School Days. Okay. Um, Big Brother Almighty. <laughs> okay. He was in that show. Um, oh, my God. I can't remember the name of this stuff. Okay. Not that long ago. Um, me and my daughter watched it on Netflix uh, where they recreated uh, the... Um, the fairy tales okay like um with um not not cinderella what was her name um not little red riding hood snow white okay but anyway um so i that's why i chose it because i like giancarlo esposito so when i go, go to you know to, to perform it or whatever you know the the my teachers were kind of giggling and i was already up there nervous and i was like what am i doing wrong <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> and they said, you know, they said, you're not, you were not laughing at you. You're not doing anything wrong. And they was like, but why did you choose a man, you know, to play the role of a man? And I was like, I, li I was like, well, I like Giancarlo Esposito. I said, did I, 
was I not supposed to, to do that? And they were like, no, you know, just usually most, you know, women choose a role of a woman and men choose a role of a, of a man. And they were like, I said, oh, so I got to change it. They were like, no. And they were like, you absolutely do not. It was like, you know, most people don't do this. <laughs> I really saw that. And they was like, I said, well, will I have to change it? Like when I go on real auditions or something? They was they were like, if you want, you know, I can tell you right now that it's going to be something very unusual. Now we talk about a different time period. There's going to be something very unusual when you go on auditions, you know, because they wanted us to pick something that we were going to use, you know, for uh, auditions, you know, so they could kind of help us through it. You know, it had a lot of cursing in it and stuff. So when I was doing it in front of my mom, I had to take out all the curse words, <laughs> you know. And I think at the time she was like, no, it's okay. That's what you chose and you're acting. But I just couldn't curse in front of my mom, you know. But so anyway, um, so I just kept it. They told me I could, so I did. So, you know, back to my Howard story when I, I was I was afraid and, you know, the, how, the history at Howard and blah, 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 you know. And actually it was a, a play and the man who was... Um, this, for this particular play, this was my senior year. The man who was doing, uh, directing the play, okay. I believe because he was a well-known actor, you know, Broadway, the whole night. I had never heard of him, okay. So the guy who worked in School of Fine Arts, he was like, I'm just telling you, you know, go ahead and audition, but I want you to know who's, who you're auditioning in front of. And he was like, and I, when he told me, I was like, oh, I don't know. He was like, no go for it just do it you know and I was like okay all right fine I believe now it's been years okay because when I saw dream girls you remember the scene when um uh uh what was her name um not uh, uh, Lord have mercy. The the, uh, the character that Jennifer Hudson played. Okay, I, my memory sometimes and gathering names at the, the drop of a hat is just a challenge sometimes. Okay, um, she was trying to get her life back together, and Danny Glover was setting her up with this, you know, bar, you know, man who owned this bar, and he was like, "Listen, you know, if she gonna do it, she gonna do it. If she ain't, she ain't. I ain't got time, <laughs> you know." Um. And he was like, I, I, I'm not going to listen or whatever. And she said, well, you are, mister, you are. I believe it was him, okay? And I'm saying that because when I saw him in this movie years later, I was like, man, that man, I know that man. He looks all too familiar. And it hit me one day, that's the man you auditioned in front of at Howard. <laughs> well, I did this audition, and I could be wrong, but I, I really believe it was him. I did this audition, and I, I say that because, well, whatever. And I did Zoom in and the sign. And when I said, you know, and introduced myself, and I said, I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to be playing the role of Zoom in, you know, from Zoom in and the sign. They were just kind of the people watching just so, was like, huh? No, you are, you know? And he looked at me like, oh, for real? That's what you're going to do. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. They told me I could do this, you know? Now, this was years later, you know, and I had been holding on to this uh, monologue for years. Okay, I love Jean Carlo Esposito. I didn't give a damn. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna do. They said I could. That's what I'm gonna do. You know. But when he looked at me like that, I was like, Oh, I'm fucked up now. Nah. <laughs> you know, because it was almost said like he was offended. You know, the way he kind of looked at me like, For real, that's what you got in front of me. <laughs> you know. All right. The next day they had a. Uh, a sign up for people who were uh, called back for a second audition. I didn't go on campus because I was not well. I was sick. I didn't find out to the day after that I was called back for a second audition. I was stupid. I missed that second audition. I should have took my ass up there. Sick or not, I wasn't that damn sick. Take your ass up there. You know, sometimes we just do shit to sabotage ourselves. And that's pretty much that was. That was some self-sabotage. I wasn't sick like COVID sick. Okay, I was sick that I could still move around, you know, and do what I had to do. Okay, because I wouldn't see my dude. <laughs> and stayed over there. Okay, well, he lived pretty much right across the street. Don't matter. Okay. So, um, I talked to my friend who worked in the College of Fine Arts, and I told him what happened. And he said, I'm going to tell you why you got that second call back. Because he knew about it. You know, he knew everything that was going on. He said, I'm going to tell you why you got that call. You know, why you were chosen for a second audition. I said, why? He said, because you, <laughs> he said, they was tripping <laughs> when you chose to do some men. And it's the same reason they was tripping at the Cleveland Playhouse when I, you know, 
when I pick my monologue, it's because you a girl sitting up here, you know, gonna play the role of a man and and zoo man at that. Okay, for those of you who are, who are familiar, he was like the leader of the gang. Okay. And I was like, yeah, but they told me in my class at the Cleveland Playhouse, you know, I could do that. And he was like, no, it's good that you did. It, you know, because one thing they used to tell us back then for theater, you know, when you go on auditions and whatnot, what the, now things are different now. I don't know how, how that world and realm is now. I have not worked in and done any work in that in years, okay? And they were like, you know, that's what they like. They like to see people take risks. And for you, for you, you know, for that time period, for you to do that, to, I'm going to play a rogue man and a cussing man and a gang leader. And you are this little feminine girl okay well I did have my head shaved back then you know but still I still look like a woman <laughs> you understand what I'm saying you know that was taking a risk and that's why he chose so why do I like people take a risk because if you're willing to take a risk in front of them then you're going to take a risk you know in in you know whatever the role is and it's you know it's like they would prefer you when you you know doing your work and um you know uh rehearsals and whatnot you know to be large Okay, because they can tell you to tone it down. It's easier to tell you to, okay, you can bring it down than it is you're small and they're trying to get you to bring it out, you know, be large, especially on stage. We're not talking about in front of a camera, you know, on stage because you got to fill up a whole fucking theater, however big or small that theater is. When I was in Atlanta, I was dating his past pastor and he took me to the Fox Theater to see, you know, a Broadway play. Listen, honey, it was a musical. I'm not the, I'm not the biggest fan of musicals. I've been in music. Oh, that was my first place coming. I'll tell you in a second. I've been in musicals. That was the first place I had ever been in, okay, were musicals. Listen, you know, besides church stuff. Listen, this black woman in that play, I don't remember the name of the play or anything like that. This, oh, her voice was so majestic, okay? She was so powerful. Her voice filled up that theater. It was just, oh, listen, it was just heavenly. I just was like, wow. You know, she's also, now she was singing, but of course the musicals, musicals are talking too. So, you know, you have to be able to fill up the theater. You know, people have to be able to see you and, you know, the nuances and everything that you bring to that character. Who are you? You know, who is this character, you know, that you are bringing to us making, you know, uh, you make it larger than, than life. We can easily tell you to tone it down, you know. And some people may have a hard time doing that too, you know, but it's a little bit easier, you know, at least from my understanding to bring it down as opposed to you scared little mouse and to get you to project it out. So the first play that I did that I can remember, I was in high school. Now, I, I have working in schools, I have what you call usual suspects, people that you see in the office all the time. I was a usual suspect when I was in school. <laughs> Okay, I was always in trouble. I was always being sent to the to the principal's office. Okay, just I was just loud. I was silly. You know, I was obnoxious. You know, I would talk back. You know, things like that. So I was always in the principal's office. So I wanted to 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 be an actress, and they had a play coming up, and I wanted to. I would talk to the. It was a very small school. The guy, the teacher, who was going to be the director of the play, and I told him, I said, I want to, because um, I thought it was too late because I didn't audition. I said, is it too late? I, I want to see if I can be in the play. And he basically told me, you can't be in the play. And I was like, what? Why? You know, and I'm thinking it was because I missed the audition, but the way he told me you can't be in it, it didn't have nothing to do with the audition. And he was like, because of your behavior and your attitude. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, that's what I felt like, you know. So he said, well, we'll we can talk to the principal about it. So they called me in the office and they, man, they chewed me out because, like I said, I was a usual suspect. My, my brother, I remember, he can kind of feel in a certain kind of way. He was at this small school and his sister was always loud, obnoxious, and silly, you know, loud and being obnoxious in the hallways and getting in trouble and talking back and all of this kind of stuff, you know. And, um, but they did allow me to be in the play. You know, I, they wouldn't allow me to do much, but they said, okay, you can be in, just be one of the choir people, <laughs> you, you know. And it was like, okay, thank you. Thank you, boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, you know, but anyway, I can't say that's what it felt like, but whatever. Um, and that play was, um, it's a big trombone with rat, <laughs> with rat attack drums in it. What was the name of that play? Oh, it's been on TV. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is terrible because I can't remember the names of a lot of this stuff. But I just remember the one of the songs. It's uh, the big trombone with the some, 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 and rat attack drums. And uh, I can't remember the name of that play. But if somebody that might hit somebody, maybe an older person's memory, what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I think that was like my first official play that I was in, okay? Um, so, but anyway, back to the Howard thing. So I missed that. So I, he told the guy, at my, the, my friend at uh, the, the College of Fine Arts, he said, get in touch with him. He was really interested in you. And I did. You know, I called and left messages. But it was just like, it's just too late. You just missed your opportunity. <laughs> you fucked up. You missed your opportunity, you know. And so I missed that opportunity. And, um... I was not happy about that, but it was a learning experience, you know, don't you want to do something, you know, you, you weren't that sick, you know, if you was down and out with the flu and you just couldn't move, that's different, there's nothing you can do about that, okay, but you weren't that sick, and I, you know, wasn't gonna lie about it, you know, I was not well, but I was well enough to move around, and I could have went up there and at least, you know, saw the sign and said, okay, I got, you know, you know, was called back, you know, or, you know, accepted for a second audition, and who knows, you know, what it would have done, I, I did go see the play, and I sat up there like, shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, stupid, <laughs> a couple things that I, I, opportunities I missed, um, um, I, like I said, I minor in theater, so I took, uh, it was acting one class, I did really good in the class, my teacher, he was really impressed with my work, and he told me that I should pursue, you know, um, graduate school for acting, and there was a list of schools where I could go, you know, receive scholarship and go for free. Okay. Young and dumb. None of the schools were in New York or, or California, so I was like, well, what is this? You know, it was in places maybe like Idaho, shit like that. That's how I looked at it back then, and I was like, these aren't good schools, you know, why would I go here? Just stupid, you know, just just didn't talk to him further about it, you know, just had my mindset so much set on, I'm gonna go to New York, I'm gonna go to New York, <laughs> you know, and it's like, this man is giving you a list of, of schools where you can go to, and the man, he tell me he had connections, you ain't gonna have no problem, you know, blah, blah, this, that, and the other. I didn't pursue it at all okay and i think that was another you know silly mistake on, on my end for you know it was something that i really wanted to do and here was just a perfect opportunity you won't have to pay for anything i can get you in any of these schools i got these connections blah 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 your work is really good especially for you just minoring in this you know didn't do it okay didn't do it and when the opportunity was gone the opportunity was simply just gone <coughs> okay because once again, I felt like, well, this ain't in New York. And, you know, uh, 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 uh. All right. But I did go to New York, but I worked in, um, I didn't stay in New York, no, a hell of a long time. I did work in theater, okay? I worked in uh, house, as house manager for the Pan Asian Repertory Theater. Um, which basically meant that I created schedules for all the volunteers and make sure that theater was clean. <laughs> okay. That's what I did. Um, back then, you know, Spike Lee was huge. So I was really trying to get in, you know, at the, with the Spike Lee. Okay, so I was sending my resume there all the motherfucking time, okay? Never heard from them or anything at all. Got to um, New York. I did walk to, um, oh man, I can't remember the name. Of this place. It's been so long. Okay, some of the record companies and whatnot dropped my resume off and whatnot. You know, nothing. You know, but my, my interest was more theater. Um, and film. Uh, so I just, in a sense, kind of gave up on it too quickly, too easily, too soon. You know, um, but I would do little stuff here and there over the years. Never really consistently, a little bit here, a little bit there over the years. Some of the stuff that I did here, um, East Cleveland Theater, um, uh, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, where, you know, I had the same solos, and, you know, I was told, you said, you just sound really good. You sound like a jazz singer. Yeah, my voice is kind of deep. I'm congested now, but, you know, I am at probably, a tr I'm probably truly a true tenor, okay? Um, don't ask me why when I was young, I would make myself go sing a uh, soprano. You know, and if somebody was next to me building down, I could hit that note. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, it just, you know, then I started singing also. I was never comfortable. It's like, but tenor, I could hit them notes like nothing. You're probably really a tenor, you know. Um, 
But so my, you know, I had to sing solo, you know, I had to do that. And I hadn't so, did no solo stuff since I was, I remember a little girl, I was in church, a little girl, and I had to sing a song. My brother sat there and made faces at me the whole entire time until one of the ladies at the church <laughs> who was sitting next to him tapped him, you stop that, stop messing with that girl, <laughs> you know, but he was making faces at me the whole time, okay. But anyway, um, then I did started doing some stuff at Caramo. I did God's Trumbles, and that was really, really fun. There, you know, the for those of you who are familiar God God's Trumbles, it's just like a variety type of play. You know, just a series of stories. And we opened the play with in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth you know, and um, I wasn't supposed to do it at first. I can't remember who was supposed to do it at first. And then it, it was one guy that, that was going to do it every... It was a guy and a, a, a male and a female. A man and a woman. And the guy who did it, his name is Duran. Uh... Is it, I think, Faraby. He is, and I think he still is. I'm not sure. He's a background singer for Erica Badu. Then listen, this guy's got a beautiful voice, and they discovered him just on YouTube, you know, because he was singing a lot of her songs. And from what I understand, she got in contact with him, called him up, and from then on, he was doing backgrounds. You know, he became a background singer for her. And this is why we were working together. I ended up, I don't remember how I ended up opening the play with him, you know, with the, you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> it was really fun. And he said to me one time, I think one night I couldn't make the opening. And one night he came, that after that night he came up to me the next night like, I don't want to open this play with anybody else but you. <laughs> I was like, for real, you know. And for me that was like, oh wow, you know, because he was really, really good, you know. And man, listen, he could belt out a note. Woo, boy, oh boy. Okay, you might find him. He's here still on YouTube. I don't know, you know. But uh, so that was like, you know, that, that felt really good for him to say that. But we had a ball with that play at Karamu House, okay? Um, maybe if I still... Oh, I can get a picture off my old Facebook. I'll put it at the end of the video. I took a picture of... Um, well, I have a picture of me and, you know, some of the cast. Okay, it wasn't everybody, but it was some of the cast. But that was really fun. And, you know, a lot of people dogged it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think it got the best reviews, okay? But nevertheless, we had fun. What I started doing after that was... I did... Well, I had done, done a play there before Gosh Trombones. I did... Um, it was a, called Riddle. There's a farm here called Riddle. The guy who started the farm... Um, one of the guys who started, he has since transitioned as well. Um, but there was a guy from California. I got, I'll put my picture up with him, um, in there. I can't remember his name. And he said that I reminded him of, of a, one of the singers. Um, she was, um, I'm, I know y'all like, girl, you can't remember nobody. Else. I can't. She was heavy set. She lost a lot of weight. Um, Oh man, I'm thinking of this song, but I'm not quite sure it was her. Mm, I can't remember because it was a singer. It wasn't like somebody I listened to all the time, or if I heard her, I would I wasn't really fam that familiar with her. You know, like oh, r probably really big, like in the '80s. He said I reminded uh, not my singing necessarily. I guess just the way I looked or whatever. Um, but he knew her and. You know, he had come from California. He's from Cleveland, but he, you know, been out in California working in the entertainment field. And he um, wrote the play for Riddle. Okay, it's a farm. Okay, you know, organic, you know, promoting, you know, organic f foods and whole foods and uh, that type of thing. And uh, so they wrote a play for the, you know, for the youth theater, I believe it was called. And um, I was in that play. I had to play like, almost like kind of like a goddess type figure from another planet or you know something like that that's when I you know had got back into it for a while that's what kind of you know spurred it off and then I did God's trombones and what I started doing after that was they did at Kiramu they did um what was it called um the color purple so I worked in the back you know in the background because I you know musicals you know, it was not my thing. I didn't want to try to be a singer, but I wanted to continue to do some work in there. So what the main actress, okay, who played the role of, um, the role would be Goldberg played. Y'all, I'm sorry, I can't even, I can't remember all these names. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't remember all these names. 
Um, and watch when I see me. Okay, I was about to say, watch when I go sit down. Every single name is going to hit me uh, when, after I turn off the video. I, so I was assigned to helping her with her costume because she had to make some quick changes backstage. She had to make some quick changes. She was union. Yes, yeah, she was in the union. Okay. So I did that, which, you know, that was interesting. You know, it was... Um, and she still, I believe she still lives here in the city, you know, cause I would see her, you know, at the gym and stuff like that, you know? So that was, but you know, she's like, when I met her, I believe she was, you know, traveling all over the place. It was another, uh, lady in the play who same thing, you know, she lived here, but she, you know, was in a union, you know, they, they those were the two union actresses in the play. And um, what uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I can think of? Like I said, I don't have my resume in front of me. Those are like the main things that I can think of. I did get a, a role in a play. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, the nurse, the black nurse. <laughs> I was the only black person in the play. I did not stick with that play. It, the auditions were like, it was way out somewhere, far from where I live. Your auditions can go well into the late night hour. I mean, not auditions, rehearsals can go way, way into the late night hour. I had like one line and I had to sit there all that time. I was like, I'm not going to do this no more. You know, um, that was here in the city. I didn't count it as a loss. I mean, a part of me felt like, oh, you should have did it anyway. Put it on your resume for the experience of it all. Okay. Um, I probably shouldn't confess to this. I'm not big on going to see plays. I'm really not. You know, I like being in them, going to sit and going to sit and watch them. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, I love going to, to see movies. I love being in plays or working backstage, but I just don't like going to sit there and watch them. I don't. <laughs> okay. I wrote one um, and I had a reading for that. And one of the person, people at the reading, I'm not going to even reveal what it was, or what it is, because, you know, I had a name for it. What you don't know, then next thing I know, somebody in the city had something for they thing called what you don't know and all of that kind of stuff. That's all right, honey. You know, so I won't, you know, people, I do this for you with it and send it to me and God knows what they did with it. Probably try to act and pretend like they wrote it. And because, you know, pretty much once it's written, it's kind of officially copywritten. Now, uh, though, you know, you can mail it to yourself. What is written is like the work is yours. But, you know, you can mail it to yourself and then you can, you know, do with the, you know, the quote, quote unquote, official way, official way, you know, and it's still, from what I understand, even they used to tell us back then, it can still be, you have some issues with people trying to steal your work or people stealing your work, you know, whether you have it copywritten or not, but you have, a, you know, a, a leg to stand on. Um... And so, you know, but one of the people came to the reading. I think I just got about, got about just every black, because it was, it's a revolved around black women. I think I got, when I did the reading, I got about every black actress that I knew in Cleveland that I did some work with, you know. Um, not every single one, of course, but a lot of them that I did work with or I had seen them, you know, do work. Uh Yes. Okay. I'll get to those plays. Um, and you know, they participated. It was, it was nice. One lady told me I should make it a screenplay, you know? So I started, I mean, I, like I said, I wrote a screenplay before it was short, you know, for school. Um, I will not still know that and the premise of that and what that was all about. Um, no, I will not share what that is either here, you know, um, I'll go, you know, somebody be saying they did it. Um, you know, but those are things that are still there, you know? Um, there was there's a, a director here who I've been in about at least maybe three of his plays. Okay, we did one at the East Cleveland Theater. His name is Michael Oatman. For you all, who, you know Cleveland might be familiar. He kind of hit a rough patch with his uh, career in theater because of a choice that he made. Um, and that made um, international news and it did not go well for him and basically out of his mouth he said it ruined my career you know but I've been in some of his plays uh, before this he never made me audition one time he made me audition only one time and okay I did it was a summer thing we did in a hot ass church okay um, I might have went overboard with the acting. <laughs> okay. And, and then he called me to do something because someone had backed out. Twice he's, he had called me to do something because someone had backed out. 
he was directing. They, they were a place that he wrote, you know, but hey, cool. Then we did, what did we do? We did at Kiramu. It was another one of his that he directed. Romeo and Juliet, uh, an African uh, love story. That was really fun. We did it outside. And um, my, my daughter was about five or six years old. So she would come to the rehearsals with me all the time, but listen. She had so much fun with them folk. It was, it was. I, I just felt comfortable. She was. I just let her go be free. So I asked myself, well, can she have a little role to play? He was like, she sure can. Oh, you know, she just had to stand there. <laughs> but there was a scene where uh, we all, everybody had to stand there and, like freeze. <laughs> the guy that I was dating at the time, he was. Uh, what did he do at the theater? He was a. Uh, um, he would uh, uh, not cr create the sets. He was a set designer. Did he design the sets or he just, no, he built the sets. Okay, he just built the set. He said, when they was frozen, he said she was standing there, her eyes was going everywhere. You know, like a kid looking from side, 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 side. And he said, it was just looking like everybody was still and frozen. Here she was like, you know, she was cute. And um, that was fun. That was fun when we did that, you know. Um, his style of directing was interesting because <laughs> we could go over a scene over and over and over again and it's like by the time you know it's like well, it's two days before the show we haven't gone over these other scenes at all <laughs> we haven't done any blocking we haven't done anything he was so confident okay and we just put them plays on and did it and made it work and that's how he worked you know um what else did he, um, that I, so it was two more uh, shows that I did, people packed out, and, and he, I, I, he called me, yeah, I'm gonna do it, I'll do it, no problem, you know. Um, and actually a short film that I had, I couldn't do it because I had to fire in my house and that cut that short. You know, I do need to contact him about that because I'm sure he's like, what the hell? <laughs> she still got my script. <laughs> okay, but, um, yeah, yeah, those are the things that I've done, theater, film. I mean, like, when I was in school, I'm, like I said, I majored in film production, so I did a lot of, you know, little short, student short. I did one for graduate student, a film for graduate uh, student. I don't know, whatever. I don't, I, she never finished it. Uh, well, maybe she, no, somebody told me she did, she actually did finish it, but I played the main character in that. Um... And then little shorts that I did in class, you know, with students that we had to do, you know, for video, for film, you know, we were always silly, you know, <laughs> that, that was one thing I, I loved about, you know, acting and doing theater and, you know, extra work, film work, video work, whatever, because we would just have a ball, <laughs> you know, it was always so fun. Even, you know, being an extra, I remember... <laughs> It was it Forrest Gump, you know, scenes where we had to talk, you know, we'd just be talking crazy, <laughs> you know, meeting a stranger, doing the same thing, even though they're talking crazy and whatnot, laughing, having a good time while they're filming, you know. I remember one time I was watching on YouTube. <laughs> I don't remember, I don't know what movie it was. It was an old movie, not like super old, not black and white, but it was an older movie. It may look like maybe the 70s or 80s or something like that, and they just... The director, the cameraman, what the director was going off on this extra because she was an older lady and she looked like she, I, you know, it didn't seem like she had done any extra work before. And she's walking toward the camera, but they were like, okay, don't look at the camera. <laughs> Every single time she looked directly at the camera, you know, and it's like you can tell the guy was, you know, first he was like, okay, <laughs> you know, trying to be nice to her, like, okay, don't look at the camera. <laughs> About the fourth or fifth time, he went, I said, oh, I got the gap. <laughs> you know, and he just went off on the woman. She did it again. <laughs> she did it again. She kept looking at the camera. She had these cat eye glasses on. That's what I'm saying. It looked like maybe the 70s or something, you know, <laughs> when they were cat eye glasses was the thing, you know. She just kept looking at that camera, you know. And it was just like, oh my God, this is so funny, you know. And he was, like I said, he was trying to be nice and. She just, it was almost like she didn't realize he was talking to her. But she was the only one walking in the direction. Don't look at the camera. And she was like, she, <laughs> camera right there, you filming me, you know. But anyway, 
That's my, my little acting world. <laughs> Things that I've done in, in acting. That's all I can think of right now. Like I said, I always get off camera and be like, oh, I forgot about this. I forgot about that. I you know, forgot about what I did, all that other shit. Okay, but I can't think of nothing else right now. That's it. That's it. All right. I, I played when in, on campus there was uh, students doing a short where they were recreating uh, Martin and Gina, and I played Gina. It was I don't remember the I don't know the name of the show, and I want to say maybe it was the second season uh, where Martin. Um, I think he had been, uh, what's his name, his boss at the radio station, who's from Cleveland, okay, um, asked him to, you know, take over the night shift as well. And Gina was like, oh, baby, don't do that. We ain't going to be able to see each other, blah, blah, blah. Then he was like, all right. So he goes back to uh, tell him. He was like, you know, with Gina, you know, saying I ain't going to be able to see her. I don't know about this night shift thing. And he was like, oh, that's that sound like woman talk, you know. <laughs> Before he said Gina, you know, that sound like woman talk. So, you know, um, basically they was trying to tell him he was, uh, you know, uh, whipped, basically. You know, so he started puffing his chest out toward Gina. So he goes, uh, you know, home and when he gets off work from that night shift and she's got food prepared for him and everything so she's telling him I got this food prepared for you and he th th tossed the eggs all over you know, I don't want that, I don't want that that was the scene that me and this guy did you know, for um one of the students or whatever, so that was fun and I played a ball, Gina, cause again I didn't have no hair uh, on top of my head I had it shaved when I was in college but anyway that's that. I just want to share that with y'all because, uh, you know, I was just thinking about it. So that's me and my little fun acting experiences. All right. All right. <laughs> Check out my Patreon. Okay. the uh, It's patreon.com. Let's get into it in the number one. Okay. Website, kiatasintuition.com. That's all I got. All right. Y'all be blessed. Peace.